Hello and welcome back to Math 200 Lecture Series from Kenyatta College. We are using PowerPoint presentations created from Mario Triola's textbook, Essentials of Statistics, 5th edition. My name is Ray Lapus. We are now in Chapter 4, Probability. Let's begin with a review and preview. Let's remind ourselves that it continues to be important to collect simple and random samples. And now, from last chapter, we have our basic descriptive statistics under control, especially the ideas of mean and standard deviation. We use probability as a bridge between descriptive and inferential statistics. One of the important concepts in creating this bridge is the rare event rule. The idea behind this rule is this. We can begin with a certain assumption of an event happening if the laws of probability consider this event to be very unlikely then the assumption was probably not correct. Section 4-2 Basic Concepts of Probability The idea in this section is to consider three definitions of probability. Also, we should be able to interpret the probability values that we find or compute. Let's begin with some basic definitions. An event is a set of outcomes of an experiment. For example, if you're rolling a six-sided die, the event can be rolling an even number, like two, four, or six. A simple event is an outcome that cannot be broken down into smaller parts. With our six-sided die example, rolling an even is not a simple event. A simple event would be rolling a 3, for example. A sample space is a set of all simple events in your experiment. For rolling a six-sided die, our sample would be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Here are a couple more examples. For a single birth, you have two simple events in your sample space, boy or girl. If we change our experiment to three births, the sample space now has eight possible simple events. An example of a non-simple event would be the event that three births produced two boys and one girl. This is not simple because there are three possibilities when this could happen. Some basic notation used in probability. We use capital P to denote probability. We use capital letters in the beginning of the alphabet to denote an event. Sometimes we may use more descriptive symbols for an event such as the actual number like rolling a 3 or the word itself like picking a heart from a deck of cards. For this symbol we say P of A and this denotes the probability of A. Here is one of the three ways to compute a probability. The relative frequency approximation is based on an experiment that you conduct many times. For example, you might toss a coin a hundred times and you might get 57 heads. Then your relative frequency approximation would be 57 out of 100 or 57 percent. The classical approach to probability is dependent on being able to obtain a sample space. If you have s number of ways to get an event A and there are n total elements in the sample space, then your probability is s over n. For example, tossing a coin has a sample space of head or tail. 
there is one way to get heads and two elements in the sample space. So the probability of getting heads is one out of two, or 50%. The third interpretation of probability is called the subjective approach. This is the approach taken for cases where specialists exist in a particular field. For example, the probability or odds that San Francisco Giants will play in the upcoming World Series is determined by baseball experts who study the s intricate aspects of baseball, such as player statistics, team statistics, schedules, weather, and many more little factors that may seem insignificant to the average person. We won't be dwelling on this definition in this class. The law of large numbers is a rule that relates the relative frequency approximation to the classical approach. It says that the more you do an experiment, the closer the relative probability will be to the actual or real probability. Let's take an example of tossing a coin. Suppose you toss a coin 10 times. Then one scenario would be that you get six heads. Suppose you toss it 100 times, and then you get 45 heads. Toss it 1,000 times, you might get 528 heads. Toss it 10,000 times, you might get 4,936 heads, etc. As you can see, these probabilities tend to get closer and closer to 50%, which is the true probability of tossing a coin and getting heads. In the process we just described, it may not be realistic to physically toss a coin 10,000 times. A simulation can be done through a computer that might mimic the toss of a coin. Further, if we take the event of getting a girl in the birth of a baby, this can mimic a toss of a coin. So we can run simulations of tossing a coin to imagine how many girls can be born with 1,000 births. A probability can be expressed as a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage. But a very important property of probabilities is that it is always a number between 0 and 1. Probabilities can never be greater than 1 or 100%, and probabilities can never be negative. There are two extremes. A probability of 0 is an event that will never happen. For example, a probability of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving happening on a Monday will never happen. A probability of 1 is an event that is certain to happen. For example, the probability that the next Thanksgiving will happen on a Thursday is 100%. Be careful that even if an event is not likely to happen, its probability would still be greater than zero. For example, the probability that I get struck by lightning is extremely small, but it is still not zero it could still happen. Here's a visual of the probability limits. We tend to say that anything over 50% is likely to happen, and anything less than 50% is not likely to happen. There are more variations along the sliding scale. You may hear phrases like almost certain, or high probability, or extremely rare. You can just interpret this using numbers that are between 0 and 1. The complement of an event is anything else in the sample space that does not include the event. For example, in rolling a six-sided die, the complement of rolling a 3 is rolling any other number aside from 3 like rolling a 1, 2, 4, 5, or 6. Suppose we knew the probability of an event occurring. 
we can find the probability that its complement would occur by subtracting it from 1. Think about 1 as 100%. If you take away everything except for that actual event, then this is exactly the complement. For example, suppose 202 people out of 1,010 smoked. If we randomly selected a person from this group, then there is an 80% chance that we select someone who does not smoke. This calculation was made using the complement rule. The round-off rule for probability is as follows. If you can express your probability as a fraction, then leave it as a fraction to get the most exact value. If the fraction is too complicated or if it cannot be expressed as a fraction, we can express the decimal and round it off to three decimal places. It would follow that if you decide to express this as a percentage, then you would round off the percent to one decimal place. This slide discusses the events that are unusually low or unusually high. We sometimes use these terms when we're anticipating a particular probability and we get something that is totally different. The last thing to discuss are odds. The odds against something happening is the ratio of the probability of the complement over the probability of that event. This ratio is reduced as a fraction A over B and we usually say the odds are A to B. The odds in favor of an event would just be written backwards B to A. The payoff odds is a gambling term that displays the net profit to the amount that you bet. Let's take a look at a casino game called roulette. If you place your five dollar chip on one number, say 13, your probability of winning is 1 out of 38 and your payoff odds are 35 to 1. Let's find the real odds and let's find the net profit if you win. To find the actual odds, we first find the probability of an event and its complement. Then we write the ratio or fraction, then reduce. We're used to eliminating the denominator if it is equal to 1, but in these cases we want to keep that number. So we write 37 to 1. To find your payday amount, we see that the payoff odds are 35 to 1. So for each dollar bet, you get back $35. Therefore, if you bet $5, you'd get back 5 times 35, which is $175. Remember that this is a bet, so you also get back your $5 bet that you placed. That is the end of section 4-2.